Hey everybody, welcome to the February patron Q&A hangout demo, all that kind of stuff. First Friday. I uh, hope everybody's doing good today. It's Friday, so the weekend is coming. Hopefully that means that you guys will be getting in your shops and doing some fun, creative things. So today we're going to be messing around with some crystals. Uh, these were sent in by Philip Danner. He's one of our patrons. And uh, pretty cool stuff. I, I, I got a little bit, I had a lot of ideas with this. Uh, and it's something that I've wanted to try for a while, so it should be pretty fun. So let me switch views really quickly and kind of show you what's going on here. So Philip sent a bunch of different things. So we got Moonstone. We got, uh, let's see, what is this called? Aura Quartz. I guess I'll hold these guys up. It might not pick up. Oh yeah, it's picking up pretty good on the camera. Pretty interesting looking. And then the Moonstone. Oh, somebody's calling. And some Quartz Points. And Labradorite. Oh, where are we going here? There we go. Get on camera. And some Rough Pyrite. Get on camera. <laughs> it's hard to... There we go. Pretty cool stuff. So we got a bunch of rocks. And then, uh, you know, not too long ago, we got these little mini baby dragon guys sent in. So I thought crystals and baby dragons, that seems like a really good idea to put together. So uh, we're going to be making some uh, like wood, you know, wood and, and resin type things using all these little goodies, kind of uh, gluing them onto the burl to kind of create like diorama type stuff. So I have two, two ideas in mind. And what I've done is I've prepared one kind of blank, I guess, in a sense. I've, I've glued on all the little bits so that we can just pour it right away. Um, and then we're going to be doing kind of gluing the pieces on the other one. It'll be kind of like cooking show style um, where we can kind of glue things together and then, uh, you know, actually pull something else out and, and finish the pour. I would probably, I, uh, I think you could probably get away. I'm going I'm to be using UV resin. I'm just going to use the Aluma UV. And I think realistically you could probably get away with you know gluing all the parts on hitting it with the light and then you know putting it out in the sun for like 15 20 minutes you're probably good to go you could probably cast it but i think what i'm going to do is just wait overnight i'm always kind of i always like to you know if you're gluing things on unless it's epoxy which you, you can just pour a like five minute epoxy gluing things on i can just pour it right away but with something like uv resin or um, like CA glue, which I wouldn't re really recommend, but things like that. I would rather have it, you know, like set up for sure. It's totally cured. It's not off gassing or doing anything weird that may interact with your clear casting resin. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. The first one that we're going to go for, let me, I'm just going to switch to the overhead cam. Kind of show you, this is what I got. I die stabilized another piece of burl. So we can glue our baby dragon on. And then I was thinking just kind of put some rocks and things around him and kind of add a little bit more interest to this blank. This could be like kind of a dragon egg type thing or, you know, whatever type of blank. Um, and then the other thing that I did, so like I said, I pre-made one, uh, like a blank. This is not gonna be a turning blank. This, this one, you know, is obviously gonna be something that you could turn up and, and finish, you know, a machine basically. What the other thing that I decided to do, and I'll just give you guys a little bit of a, a, a teaser here. I just made this and I, and I used like pretty much all of those rocks, kind of glued them on there and added a little bit more. And so what we're going to do, let's see, that's the wrong way, is make kind of like a diorama piece. So let's put it this way for you guys. And I was thinking we, just, we can just, you know, pour clear resin and then, you know, basically it'll just be something that you can just kind of set on the, you know, on, on the bookshelf, on the desk, whatever, It'd just be a showpiece type thing. Just kind of clean it up and polish it. So this will be the one that we're just going to pour our clear resin. Um, so we'll save that for a little bit later. All right, so let's, uh, let's get rolling here. So um, first things first, let's mount our dragon. And uh, so this is just Buckeye Burl, uh, and I'm hoping that, yeah, this should work pretty good, I think, for the... I think, I think I'm going to move the camera angle just slightly, because I'm going to be wanting to work at the end of this, like the edge of the desk here. So hold on real quick, let me, let me just adjust this a little bit. 
up. Oh, well. Zoom a little bit so that that way the edge of the table is kind of in the middle of the, the view there. So some of the materials, the things that I have here, we have Aluma UV. You could use any UV resin. It doesn't really make that much difference. Uh, this stuff works pretty good. Um, you're gonna want a little uh, torch, one of the, the UV light um, flashlights and whatever UV resin that you use, there's gonna be a, uh, a specific wavelength uh, for the light that you wanna use that's gonna give you the maximum uh, curing. And so I can't remember what Aluma UV is now. Hmm. Oh, here it is, uh, 365 nanometer. Let's see if I can get that on. I don't know if that'll, yeah, there it is. I'm, I'm gonna try and point to where it is on the instructions here. Right, right there. 365 nanometers, and that's what this light is. I went and specifically got that. I know that uh, the, the other stuff, the solar res, resin that I use, that's a little bit slightly different, and they sell a torch that's the specific wavelength. Um, other wavelengths will work, but you're better off getting one that's exactly the right wavelength. And then if you put it out in the sun, the sun has all the wavelengths, so you don't have to worry about it in that case. <coughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to pour a little bit of Aluma UV into a cup. Stuff goes a long way, so it's not like you really need a whole lot. Better off putting a little bit in your cup and then adding some if you need it. Um, the other issue is you don't want to dump a, like leave your container open or dump a ton of that in there because if you accidentally screw up and hit <laughs> hit that cup with your light then it's going to cure so always better off just using a little bit of it at a time and go from there all right so a couple other things that i'm going to get here so you can use like toothpicks you can use brushes um all kinds of you know whatever whatever you got a q-tip i'm going to pull out a couple different ideas here Actually, I think I'm gonna pull. I think I did. The, yeah, I used the toothpick on the on the the one that I already did. But I had actually forgotten that Chad Schimmel has had a brilliant idea. Uh, he he showed a technique for you know applying your rocks in rings. Um, originally, you know, he was kind of using you know. Uh, what are these things? Tweezers to pick up little rocks and dump them in there. And it's just, it's horrible. They go flying out of the tweezers. And so he finally was like, why don't you just grab your brush or something, you know, whatever it may be. It could be like a Q-tip type thing or um, just grab a brush and then you can pick up your rock, you know, get a little bit of that um, resin, the UV resin on the tip of your brush and then grab a rock. So what I'm going to do is we're going to Let's get everything kind of rolling here. Let's get everything laid out. I'll show you how, how I get set up. So we're gonna put a few of these rocks in each one of these cups. Rock on. Probably won't need a ton of this stuff. Uh, I wanna use, I wanna kind of mix and match all of this stuff. Probably not gonna need a ton of each one for, for this little guy. There we go, that's probably good. I'm just going to leave the quartz points in the bag. Scott's here. Clean up snow. Yeah, everybody, the whole country was getting slammed this past week, it seems like. Um, you guys can just send all your snow to me. Throw it up in the, the Tahoe Mountains here. Amy's here, too. I think I missed you. Sorry about that. And our pyrite. This is pretty cool. Fool's Gold is really interesting. I don't know if you guys are... I don't know. Pretty neat looking. Okay, so we got everything laid out in front of us. I'm going to put this stuff away so that I'm not... I don't like clutter in front of my face. I'm going to use this brush. So here's a couple different brushes. You could use a toothpick even. That's actually what I used the first time. Um, that works fine. Uh, I might leave a toothpick out, but I'm thinking that this brush 
is going to be my go-to on this one. I think that it's got a nice, you know, fine tip, but it's still pretty small. I can dip, grab a thing, and hopefully everything will work. One of my problems with this one, it's, I think this is a lip gloss brush is what they're, I think somebody pointed that out. But the problem is these tips can kind of come out pretty easy. Um, and then this one is like an eyeliner one or something like that, but a really small tip. So I don't think I'm going to go with that one. We're going to go with this one. Plus it's got a longer handle. It'll be comfortable. So just, just giving you some thoughts and ideas that are floating through my head. Um, yeah, well, it's not really a Q-tip, um, but yeah, that's a good point. This is not a Q-tip. This is a, a fake thing. There's no fuzzies on that. And there's different types of Q-tips also. There's the cotton ones and like, you know, that is a, a good point. Um, you can get some of that material kind of coming off. <clears throat> All right. So just do it like this. This guy kind of right in the middle. I'm actually going to pull up a chair. I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> but um, you're best off if you're doing this type of work to get a kind of a nice, comfortable place to sit. You're not just standing up the whole time. There we go. That's pretty nice. I'm kind of on a little stool here. Um, I, the one thing is I don't really have a lot of leg room under this desk or tabletop, but I will survive. So... First things first, um, this is kind of not the best camera angle, so I apologize, but there's no real, I have no way to do anything else really. All right, so I'm just looking at this, trying to figure out what, how do I want this guy to sit? And I think one thing that you can do is grab, you know, like a Dremel tool and kind of Dremel some, some like a little channel out. I think we'll be okay. One of the nice things is if there's, if there's like airspace, between the little dragon guy and the bottom of the burl, that'll give you some nice places to put some of these little rocks. Um, or we could also fill with some rocks first and then kind of place him on there. I think what I'm gonna do is just glue him down first. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind is we're gonna turn this and I don't wanna turn the baby dragon away. So <laughs> let me see that actually this fits really nicely like this. And I do kind of like him laying sideways, but this just works. So I think we're going to go with that. And let's see here. Now what I'm looking for is the contact points. Got a couple of them. Got one in the back, one on the side and one on the like bottom side and one on the other bottom side. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue or UV resin, I should say, right there. A little bit right here. And I think, let's see here, I can kind of just move him. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. This is the fiddly thing. I'm not usually much of a fiddly type person. I like to just sl slam things into a <laughs> into a mold and move on. But it is pretty fun. So if you're if you're kind of the impatient type like me, just clear your schedule and take your time with this stuff and it'll go good. Okay, so I'm gonna hold him in place. Grab my the one thing I don't like about this light is I like lights where it has it on the back. Why would you put the button here? Ridiculous. And I almost shined that right into the cup. Could have been terrible. I may not get it on the first shot. That's fine. I'll just add a little bit, but I think that I probably got, yeah, I got some. I don't think that I, I don't think I messed up my cup. I'm going to put my cup of resin kind of off to the side here. I think I got him enough. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more on this bottom side here. See what I'm doing? Sort of. Might need to get a light. I'm going to kind of add, paint a little bit more on just to give it a little bit more support. Hopefully. And all we're doing, you know, this is the beauty of the, the UV resin. I don't need it to be fully cured or anything like that. I just need it to, to harden up. 
Um, you would want to leave this, you know, under a UV light or out in the sun for probably about 15 to 20 minutes to make sure it's fully cured. So now from here, all we need to do is just add some, some rocks. So I'm going to kind of start with the bigger ones first to kind of figure out how I want those to look. And then we'll just fill in with these little guys, fill in the spaces around. Quartz are really cool with the, the kind of, you know, these, these bevel cuts and all that stuff. I'm thinking that might be kind of cool. So it's just a matter of kind of, you know, looking at how things will kind of fit in there. And then just picking, you know, a, a way to put it. This one's maybe a little bit big. This. That might be a good one. Skinny one. Let's see here. Let's see what else do we have. Let's dump these guys out. There's some little shorter ones. I'm thinking maybe some shorter ones poking out from back here. And I may cut into some of these when I'm turning it, but that's fine. You know, I'm going to try not to. And I may not go for like an egg shape necessarily. We'll, we'll just kind of have to see how everything kind of goes when I'm turning. Oh, I'm moving my guy. Let me see here. I think that maybe this one kind of fit nicely. Oh, back in here, maybe. I don't know. I'm having a tough time finding one that I. Ooh, I like that. I like that right there. So let me I'm gonna paint, paint on a little bit of this UV resin right here. I do have some tweezers, which I think might come in handy on this one here. Kind of hold it the way that I want it. There we go. And then I'm going to hit it with the, my light. So it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of a fiddly process, like I said, but pretty fun. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm, I'm guessing that where I painted that resin on is there's probably some gaps. So I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of that number. Okay. That's locked in. And now this one. Now this is where, you know, a toothpick might come in more handy. Kind of add a little bit more down into the, the crevice there. Okay. Oh. All right, so I am I know I'm not looking here. Wonder if you want to consider a small amount of dye. Uh, I don't I don't know that Oh for in the resin? No, I don't think so. I don't know if they're going to That's the thing also is this is kind of an experiment. I just I want to see how this works cuz I've never done it before. So I'd rather knowing that there could be problems, you know, I I know I realize that. I'd rather just give it a shot and see what happens. You know, than try to uh anticipate cuz what what can happen is it may not you may see them anyway. So if I add dye and do all that stuff, it may, it's going to turn out not exactly how I want. And so I'd rather test the waters first, and then next time we know, you know, that's, you don't, you don't need to do that, or yeah, you d definitely do need to do that. Let's put a little bit of pyrite right here. Let's put it up here. I like that. So it's going to be hard for me to keep an eye on the chat this time. I'll try and, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm, I have resin curing on me, but I have to kind of concentrate on what I'm doing. A little bit more than if I'm just kind of quickly pouring a batch of blanks. Okay. 
And one of the problems that I may run into is these little blobs of UV resin may kind of show up. They even may be little shiny spots. You never know. Okay, so I got a few of these pieces going here. I think, let's see here. I'm going to grab my tweezers. How this guy looks kind of back. Ooh, that's kind of neat. What do you guys think of that? No, it's kind of just also sitting right there, but ooh, there we go. A little bit of separation. I like that. See if I can figure out how to get a, I'm going to try the toothpick. So it's just kind of a matter of, you know, picking the right tool and just trying to, you know, get some glue where it'll hold these little pieces. And it's not like you need a ton of glue on these things. You just need to kind of hold them in place for a second, you know, so they don't move around in the, when you're casting it. Kind of nice to have another toothpick to kind of poke and prod things. So that's nice and that's, that looks like it's pretty well situated there. All right, I think, I think that's probably pretty good. All right, so let me stand up and show you guys what we got going on here. Looking pretty sweet. I like the mixture of all these different colors that in, in having a little bit of a darker background there, the, the colors in the, the crystals are really kind of popping out more. All right. Light. Now to fully cure UV resin, you're going to want to set it under a, you know, the sun or, or a UV light. Um, I would again recommend probably about 15 to 20 minutes just to make sure that you've gotten everything, you know, fully, fully hardened up and cured. Um, and especially in the case of if you're going to recast this stuff, you really want to make sure that this stuff is cured because otherwise it can off gas while, while the other resin that you pour on top is, is trying to cure and that'll mess up stuff. It'll, it can, you know, interact, react with it. It could cause little air bubbles or who knows what cracks possibly. All right, so let's get all this stuff out of the way and then I'm gonna bring over my, I'm gonna do this. Well, I'm gonna show you how I have this thing set up. What I did with my little nail doohickey, how I'm gonna set it up, but I'm gonna set it up behind me, so. Let me switch to the work area camera. Okay, I guess I should have maybe done that double uh, when I was doing all that stuff, but I thought the close up was a little bit more important. Okay, so this thing is a nail curing machine. Uh, and I don't, I honestly, I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that on, on Amazon. Now, the problem is typically it has this little platform here. All right, and so the problem is this thing's not going to fit. <laughs> so we're going to have to do a little bit of modification. So it's not too big of a deal. Uh, the easiest thing that I came up with is you can see that there's a little bit of platform to deal to work with on the back end of this. So I'm just going to set it up. Look in here, make sure that I got that kind of on the platform. And then I got a couple other little pieces, and this is just three-quarter inch um, melamine. Could be anything basically. 
So I just want to get this thing lifted up off the ground a bit. And then what I can do is just stick my little dragon on this little plate. I could probably just stick it down, you know. I guess I can't put it back on that rack, but just slide that, that plate on the, on the tabletop and then turn it on. So I'll, I'll give you guys a kind of a shot of what it looks like working, maybe. Plug, there we go. Uh, is it on? There you go. You can kind of see what's happening in there. I guess I didn't really angle that towards you guys. <laughs> Too well. <laughs> there you go. So you can see it's it's working, and I like this because it's reflective. That's why I want to keep this thing underneath it. So I'm going to turn it off for now. I'm going to just put it back behind me. I'm going to switch to the intro cam and show you guys where I'm going to set this thing up. And that way it'll cure it while, you know, without me having to go outside. The other reason I don't really like going outside is there's people... Uh, we're not necessarily... It's not like we're in, like, the super ghetto, but... I really wouldn't consider this a nice neighborhood. And there's like kids walking by all day. So I don't really want to just leave my stuff sitting out here personally. So it's kind of nice for me. But like I said, right now I don't even have sunlight to work with. So this little machine is great and you can buy like the full-on you know like bulbs i mean they have huge you know setups that you can do typically i'm probably not going to be needing that kind of thing so i just bought this little this little machine i think it, it's got different like time limits also there we go all right so there we go so i'm just going to leave that i think it probably i'm going to start a timer just to see how long well, I'll have to kind of keep an eye on things, but we'll have to kind of, I'll double check that and see when it goes off. I don't know how long it goes for. All right, so let's see here. Worth the effort? I think so. So the big thing is, you know, the way that I did that, I, I shouldn't really be cutting into it. So at that point, yeah, I think it's going to be worth the effort. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, my biggest questions at the beginning were, are the, the, the colors that kind of you know, radiate off of these crystals, are they going to show up under resin? And I think they will. Uh, Philip said at least a few of them. I'm sure the pyrite will look good. The, the quartz crystals could kind of disappear in clear resin. Sometimes it has that effect. We'll have to see about that as well. I'm gonna put, let's see here, I'm gonna get this, this camera. Yeah, but you guys could kind of see the colors, but I just wanna kind of show you again. See how it's kind of, it's almost like an interference powder in resin. And it's also kind of mostly on one side, it, it seems on this one. Really interesting. These guys have lots of color, lots of kind of blues and purples in there. Oh, I'm not on camera. Really cool. So I'm hoping that all that color stays, you know. I'll kind of have similar, that, 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 I don't know what, what's, what's the word? I don't know, color pop, <laughs> color pop. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Where is my, what's going on here? I'm going to put this stuff away that I'm finished with. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to cast our the other one that I made basically. So let me I'm just going to pull this guy out of here. So I just and I made I don't know. I, I was talking to Casey on the the resin cast podcast on on Monday about this. I, I went to the effort of making a mold out of HDPE. I don't really plan to be using this for a lot of things, so it was kind of a pain, but um, you know, more work than, than it's worth. But it, it's going to be you know, square and easy, and, and it'll work well for this. So I just, the other thing is I'm, I know how to make these pretty fairly quickly. Um, but I think you could do a much more simple you know, mold if you're just doing kind of a one-off. 
But here is my other baby dragon. So this is not going to be a turning blank. This is going to be just kind of a diorama thing that you, you know, like a square cube thing that you can kind of set on your desk. And so the way it's going to fit is we're going to put our little baby dragon in there like that. And it's going to be cool. I really like the, the quartz coming down from the top of the burl. That's pretty neat. All right. So uh, first thing we need to do on this guy is glue the little burl chunk. The, this top burl chunk is kind of wedged in there. It ain't going anywhere. This one, however, we need to glue down so it doesn't move or float. So let's plug that guy in and see and get this thing ready. And then what I'm going to do is toss it in the oven. Uh, I don't think that heat or anything like that is going to cause any issues, but at the same time, I really didn't want this thing just sitting in the oven forever. I don't know. I don't think we need to do that. Uh, and I just don't know for sure. So what we're going to be using for the resin this time, you could use, you know, anything basically, but I'm going to go with uh, the Amazing Clearcast Plus again uh, for the UV protection. It'll keep it clear, uh, keep it from yellowing for uh, a good amount of time. Not indefinitely necessarily, but um, as long as you keep it out of the sunlight, you should get a long time of protection. So it should be ready now. Going to take him out. I, now, I did not do much drying of this wood. It's a uh, red Malay burl. Hopefully, that's not going to be a problem. I don't really think there's a whole ton of moisture in these Australian burls. But, you know, for best results, you always want to dry everything out. Uh, the nice thing is using epoxy, it's not going to be nearly as um, sensitive to the moisture as Alumilite Clear Slow Set would be. That is one kind of advantage to using epoxies. They're usually a little bit better when it comes to that, to moisture. All right, so we got our little dude. I'm going to pop him in the oven. All right, so here we go. Uh, one of the nice things also is this has a long working time. So if I shorted this, if I don't have enough resin, then I can always mix up more. Very. Oh, I don't need to. We're not using weight. <laughs> I'm so used to that with the Lumalite. Clear. Okay, so uh, part A. We're okay here. I'm okay. And I like to mark on my cup just so I know where I'm going with this stuff. There's a lot of lines on this thing. It's kind of nuts. So let's find our ounces. Let's try and get our pen to open up. What the heck? Okay, whatever, we'll do this side of it. Uh, so there's six ounces and there's 12. Yeah, that should probably be. I get the rest of this other, ow. Oh. Poked myself with my pen. Dangerous pen. All right, I can barely see that mark. So there we go, six and 12. Okay, now once again, you want to make sure that you get down to eye level here. Get your, get your eye line, you know, your, your eye level down uh, to that line so that you're getting a, a flat thing. Because if you're looking down trying to, you know, figure out how much volume it is, it's going to be off. I like to get kind of close. Otherwise, it's really uncomfortable. And then just double check and make sure. That's pretty good. I did pretty good on that one. Put our part A away. Move on to part B. And I'm going to the 12 ounce mark.
Ooh, I did pretty good there too. All right, so we got our resin. Get that off the table. Our thing's still going. Now this stuff is pretty goopy. Pretty goopy stuff. Thick, much thicker than like Alumilite Clear. Um, but I, I find it works pretty well for a lot of these types of things. But I am going to pressurize it uh, because you can see just barely mixing this. You'd have to mix this so slow, and I do not have the patience for that, uh, to, to not introduce air bubbles. So thinner viscosity resins, they, they mix a little bit easier and, and don't you know get as many bubbles trapped in them just mixing it. But this stuff very easily does so i you know i if you want to go for bubble free completely bubble free i, I would pressurize stuff any anything that you cast it's just very difficult to not introduce air bubbles and make sure they all float out and do all that kind of stuff pressure just makes it easy you stick it in there and there's no bubbles Okay, so I think this is probably mixed up well enough. So let's do a little bit of pouring. Yeah, caro syrup, that's a good one. Yeah, it, it's, it's very caro syrup viscosity-ish. All right, so our, our mold's a little bit warm. Not, not super hot, probably could have left it in a little longer than that, but. Now, let's make sure that we're on camera. And I'm just going to kind of pour a thin stream down to the bottom and let this fill up. Now, one thing that I forgot to do was blow out this mold. So that, that was, I forgot. But you, you know, dust particles, you don't want to, you want to try and clean that mold out first. We might get a dust particle or two. Hopefully they'll just stay on the bottom. Might be losing the crystals. And it disappeared a little bit. Hopefully once everything's clear, uh, cured and the bubbles are gone, hopefully they'll come back. Looks like I picked a good amount of resin to pour. Um, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to make sure that I get, you know, a, more than the, the depth, like it's, I'm going to cover the wood on the top here uh, just to make sure, uh, you know, there's like cracks on the back sides of the wood and here and there. So just to make sure that it, you know, when it's filling in all the little spots there, it's not going to drop below the surface of the, the wood. I want to make sure that I've got plenty and then I can just sand off whatever I don't need or cut it, you know. I'm rolling it around a little bit to make sure that it's getting into, you know, all the spots. And I'm, you know, if there are any kind of big air bubbles or air pockets or anything like that, they're hopefully we're, we're clearing those. The pressure pot can only collapse an air bubble, right? If there's just a void, an air pocket, let's say, where, where there is, you know, air and no, no resin, the pressure pot can't really fix that. It's, it's collapsing the structure of a bubble. That's, that's all you can do. So you're always better off. Ooh, I can kind of see that, that, this crystal in there. So I think, I think we'll be okay. Hopefully it'll be all right. Uh, but anyway, so you want to make sure that, the, you know, there's no areas where there's just no resin because that's the pressure pot can't really do anything about that. Okay, so we've kind of rolled it around a little bit. Looking pretty good. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit for a minute here and I'm going to take the torch and just kind of pop some of the surface bubbles. Again, we, we are going to pressurize this, but you know, it, it can't hurt to, to get rid of some of the air bubbles before you even put it in the pressure pot. Um, and it'll also kind of keep that surface like kind of smooth at the end. 
you don't have any bubbles on the top. That's another issue with pressure. The top can kind of have bubbles because half of it's exposed, right? And so the way pressure works, it'll collapse it while collapse a bubble, an air bubble while it's under pressure. But the minute you release the pressure, it's going to grow right back. So anything that's on the surface, you know, if there's like half a bubble on the surface, you'll, you'll notice little, little pits here and there. That was a bubble that was kind of halfway on the surface. And when you release the pressure, it came back basically. Uh, I, I believe that's the kind of scientific way of looking at it. Um, the way resin works though, it changes from a liquid to a solid and while it's curing. And so uh, basically the bubbles that are in the resin, they're locked in place because of that transformation from liquid to solid. Still haven't gotten 100% confirmation on that as being you know what's really going on with this but it's the best explanation i've heard so far just need to kind of confirm that with someone that i trust <laughs> actually that's the problem i haven't found anyone that i totally trust so this light's still on it's been 26 minutes that thing's doing good it does shut off maybe it's a 30 minute timer uh, and it actually has three different ones um there's like 120 second 100 like 120 seconds 180 seconds and then it says constant which but it still it turns off i'm guessing it may be 30 minutes possibly all right so i'm going to take my little torch here and just do a little bit of bubble popping you got plenty of time Look at how clear that is. I, I think it's just fun to, to hit it with the torch because it kind of clears things up for a little bit. You can see further in there. You don't want to torch your epoxy too much. You do not want to use flame on polyester resin. It will literally light on fire. Um, you're all right with urethanes and epoxies for the most part. But... Uh, you don't want to torch it. It can kind of singe it and that's, it's not good for it. So you just, you just want to kind of quickly go over it and not, not linger in any one spot for too long. But I can see the crystals in there. You can see that one. So I think we're going to be okay. I can also see all those little rocks. Now again, it hasn't cured, but I am seeing the color. Let me, let me zoom in for you guys a little bit. Let's see if we can. Problem is it's not, let me, let me adjust this camera real quick. So you're like right straight looking down in it. There we go. So you can see that quartz right there. And I can, I don't know if you guys are seeing all the little colors. They're, they're coming out in there. See all the little rocks down in there? Or crystals? A little baby dragon sitting there and you can the pyrites really shine and I can see some reflection from this angle from light. Looking pretty sweet. There's another crystal right in front of the baby dragon also. So pretty cool. So let's uh, pop this guy into the pressure pot. We'll switch to this view. We'll grab this pressure pot. Pop it in there. I'm just going to double check and see, make sure this thing's laying flat. I haven't, I don't know that, I don't think I've leveled this one. I don't really want it to be all cockeyed. So we're good that way. Just a little bit off, a little low on this side. So in my pressure pot, I can kind of get away with just, there is a slight dish. And so if it's kind of low on one side, I'll just kind of push it to one side of my pressure pot. That seems to work quite often. Huh. 
still going on here. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. There we go. Leveled it that way. Pretty level this way. Luckily, we have ages to work with this, so there we go. So it's dead level. And then I'm going to hit it with uh, 70 PSI, and then we will be golden. All right, and again, I'm going to leave that in overnight. It should be good to go in the morning. Well, I'm not going to be here in the morning. <laughs> in the afternoon, sometime around noon maybe is when I'll get here. Uh, and so I'll, I'll post pics of, of what that one looks like tomorrow. Oh, our light shut off. It's 35 minutes on this counter, so I'm guessing that if I turn it on continuous, is that what it's called? There's, there's a setting called constant. It's probably about a 30 minute timer. So we got that thing done. I'm gonna give you guys one more quick view of this guy while we got him here. Looking pretty wicked, I think. Be excited. So I might kind of nudge some of these little rocks here and there on the edge. There, there's, there's a chance I might nick some of this stuff anyway. So we'll have to kind of see how that goes. Very uh, sparkly and cool. And this burl, once we hit it with the, the resin, should get really like a nice dark red. It looks kind of dull right now. Um, so don't get disappointed if you'd stabilize something. And when it's wet, you know, like when you, when it's, when you pull it out of the chamber with your dyed re you know, resin and it's like looking all super kind of crazy colored, and then you bake it and it turns kind of dull like this, don't fret because it, it's not, it hasn't dulled. If I hit this with some denatured alcohol, you get, you get your color back. A nice rich kind of red, darker. All right, so once we hit this with resin, it's gonna really look nice and, and bold red. Anyway, there we go, we got our baby dragon. We get, did a couple of them. Again, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to pour this. It's not gonna be super spectacular. It's just gonna be stick it in a pipe, pour some resin on it. So, whew, that was fun.